the other thing then is we we hear daily, you know, about how uh, you know the growing percent of uh, electric vehicles as a you know as a percentage of new car sales and 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 all the growing capacity of solar and wind and and all of that is true. However, when we look at the big picture, all of that renewable energy only accounts for about five percent of the world's total energy consumption today and and we can say oh well you know that's going to change and 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 i certainly hope that it will but but when we look at history we we don't go from five percent to fifty percent or a hundred percent in a decade or two or three or four it just never works that way um, and as i said before more likely we will be using just as much or nearly as much biomass, coal, oil, and gas in 30 or 40 years as we are today, we'll just be adding a lot more renewables on top of that. And the percentage of fossil fuels will decrease, but not the absolute amount. And so the earth, the ecosystem that we're trying to save, it doesn't care about percentages. It cares about what well, doesn't care about anything because it's it's the earth. But I mean, what we should care about are total emissions, not that the percent of coal is going down relative to the to, to the total because emissions are emissions. And if we're not using any less coal, oil or natural gas or not much less than emissions keep going up. And that is the problem that if we if we look at total emissions, carbon dioxide, methane, all of these things, all the greenhouse gases, we've made almost no progress whatsoever since we first recognized that global heating might be a problem 40 or 50 years ago. We've had 35 or 36 international climate conferences in which we always say the same thing. And I'm not being critical, okay? This is the way human beings work. But the truth is, is that Global emissions keep climbing, and the reason they keep climbing is that no matter how much renewables we add, if we don't reduce our total amount of energy consumption, it's just not going to make any material difference. And so the message that, that I would like people to take away from this conversation, if they remember nothing more, is that the problem isn't fossil fuels. Fossil fuels are a big problem, don't get me wrong. The problem is the size of the human enterprise is just too big. And, and we are crowding out all of the other species on the planet. We're poisoning the planet, not just the atmosphere, which is emissions, but we're, we're poisoning the rivers and the lakes and the oceans and the land. And it's all because of the growth of, of the human enterprise. And that's what we really need to look at. And, and, and so in a way, and, and some people won't like this, climate change is kind of a narrow view of the problem. So back to consumption. Um, yeah, 5% of what we consume is wind and solar. And if we add in nuclear, you know, we might get ourselves up to eight or 9%, but it's, you know, it's, 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 it's a relatively small fraction and we're just not making very much progress at reducing emissions. So I think we have to, and I'm glad we started here because we just need to get over this idea that we're on the verge of completely changing everything. I'd like to, I'd like to say we are, but that's not what the data says. And unless something radical changes here in the way human beings adopt new technologies and behaviors, it's unlikely that any of these net zero kind of objectives are realistic in 2040 or 2050 or 2060.